the mercy to the world 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 sallallahu alayhi wa sallam الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيد المرسلين أما بعد فأعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم Please repeat after me الصلاة والسلام عليك يا رسول الله وعلى آلك وأصحابك يا حبيب الله الصلاة والسلام عليك يا نبي الله وعلى آلك وأصحابك يا نور الله صلى الله تعالى على محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم Viewers of Madni channel, welcome back to YOLO series 3, The Mercy to the World. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen, we're on a magnificent journey through the life of the beloved of Allah Azza wa Jal, Nabi Akreem sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And what an amazing journey it's been. How much we've learned about the life of Nabi Akreem sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the events that happened in that great era. And today, we're going to talk about one of the greatest events. You'll remember that we were leading up to something that was going to change civilization forever. Today, we're going to cover the conquest of Makkah al Mukarramah. Subhanallah. But before we do, let's start with our normal blessings that we gain from reciting through the Pak upon Nabi Akreem sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Aka Akreem sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is reported to have said that whoever sends through the Pak upon me once, Allah Azza wa Jal writes one Kiraat Sawab reward in his book of deeds. Now the question that that begs is, how big is a Kiraat? Who's been to Medina? Mount Ahad Sharif is about 4.7 kilometers long, about 1.2 kilometers wide. And Naka Karim sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, whoever decides through the park upon me once, one Kiraat reward is written in his book of deeds, and one Kiraat is the size of Mount Ahad. Subhanallah. So how amazing is it to recite through the park upon the blessed Habib sallallahu alayhi wa sallam day and night and fill your book of deeds with this amazing reward. The scholars say that the best thing you, you can do is continually recite through the park upon the best of creation sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Salu ala al-Habib sallallahu ta'ala ala Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Now, we start with our amazing uh, section, but before I do, we're going to do, uh, I'll give you the question of today. So let's go to our question. And when did zakah become farz, obligatory? So when was zakat declared obligatory, become a farz? That is the question of today. Inshallah, the answer at the end of the program. Now, before we go to a beautiful kalam by our beloved Rukhni Shura, Haji Abdul Habib at Tari Damud Barakatu Malaliya, I will say simply this, that, you know, the love of Nabi Kareem sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is truly captured in the kalam of Allah Hazrat. And Allah Hazrat says something really amazing, that, you know, everything that shines, Every body who shines, every spirit that shines, gets its illumination, gets its light from Nabi Kareem sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And so when, if we want to really um, reach our achievements, we want to really reach our true potential, and we want to get to those great heights, then if we turn to the court of Nabi Kareem sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and we start to receive that beautiful light, with a clean heart and a clean mind and a clean spirit, then that light which is illuminating the world will illuminate us from inside and outside. And you will achieve what you want in life in the love of Nabi Akreem sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So Allah Hazrat says, Chamak tujh se paate hain sab paane wale, mera dil bhi chamka de, chamka ane wale. Let's go to the beautiful kalam. Sallu ala al-habib sallallahu ta'ala, ala Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa न कोई आप जैसा था न कोई आप जैसा है कोई यूसुफ से पूछे मुस्तफा का हुस्न कैसा है ऐ जलवाए जाना ऐ जलवाए जाना Jangan 
Yeah. 
Subhanallah, what a beautiful kalam. You know, when you have a light and you put it in, say you put a lamp in the jungle, what will happen? You will get all sorts of things flying around it. And their life evolves around this. They love flying around light. So what it said here is, tu risalat hai. You are the light of prophethood. And alam tera parwana. And the entire world is like those moths which are coming around and trying to get the blessings and the, the noor and the light and the heat from the beauty. Your beauty, Ya Rasulullah sallallahu What a beautiful kalam. Inshallah, we're going to move to our main section. Salu alal Habib sallallahu ta'ala ala Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa The mercy to the world. So for those of you who joined us last week, you'll remember that we didn't cover this last week. I'll give you a quick recap of exactly where we were. Now, we covered obviously the Treaty of Hudaybiyah and how that treaty um, on the face of it um, proved, uh, showed that there might be difficulties for Muslims and it was favoring the Kuffar. But Nabi Akrim sallallahu alayhi wa sallam's amazing wisdom um, shone forth and we realized within a short time that that treaty was gold. And how now even the Kuffar wanted certain terms amending because of the people uh, who had um, come from Mecca and had set up camp near the coastal areas and we covered that. And so Abu Sufyan had come to Mecca to try and um, initially um, renew that treaty because the Kuffar had then broken that treaty. They'd said, we don't want the treaty anymore, but then realized that they um, were taking on the might of the Muslims who had now, because of the Treaty of Hudaybiyah, had sent out the message of Islam far and wide and had covered most of the Arabian Peninsula and beyond so that tribes and big countries were now coming into the fold of Islam. Some rejected, but some accepted as well. And Islam was spreading very beautifully. And so Abu Sufyan comes 
And you'll remember the incident about his daughter, the wife of Nabi Akrim and how when he went to sit on a particular mat, a mantle, she removed it. And he thought, did you remove it because you thought that it wasn't good enough for me? And she said, no, I removed it because this is the mat, this is the mantle of the Prophet and you are not pure enough to go anywhere near it. SubhanAllah, that gave Abu Sufyan a shock. Now, Abu Sufyan was a character who had been opposing Islam for you know over 20, 23 years. And his way, every opportunity he had, he tried to make life difficult. He plotted against Islam. He plotted against Nabi Kareem Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And now after the Battle of Badr, you have to remember, he was the one of the chiefs that were left and he was the main leader. So for him to be, you know, um, for this to happen to him and then he comes to the court of Nabi Kareem Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he goes to Sayyidina Abu Bakr Siddiq radiallahu He doesn't give him the time of day, but the serious nature of Sayyidina Siddiq Akbar, he doesn't say much. Then Sayyidina Umar Farooq, who really mocks him and says, you know, do you really think this? And Hazrat Ali radiallahu as I mentioned a couple of weeks ago, gave him some time. But again, he said, put your whatever you want forward. And it, he was humiliated in a way because he was trying to now revive something that wasn't going to happen. And then Nabi Kareem sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, you'll remember, ordered the army to start preparing. Now they didn't know what was going to happen. What would they be preparing? Where they were going to head for the next battle? But Akka Karim sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has ordered them to prepare. And this is a unique, unique situation because although normally the close confidence would be told that we're going to do this, so you've got the Battle of Muta, you've got other things. But here, Nabi Karim sallallahu alayhi wa sallam tells nobody. You'll be shocked to learn, Hazrat Sayyidina Siddiq Akbar radiallahu alayhi wa didn't know. Hazrat Aisha Siddiqa radiallahu alayhi wa the mother of the believers didn't know. Akka Karim sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa didn't tell anybody just simply to prepare for war. Now, during this time of preparation, because it was going to take a few weeks, Abu Sufyan leaves and it wasn't immediate. Nabi Karim Sallallahu Alaihi orders this, these preparations. And in the interim, there is an expedition of eight companions, the scholars write, that was sent north towards Syria and that area where the Battle of Mu'tah had taken place. So some people thought maybe They've gone to check the ground and test and see whether, you know, we're going to a further war with the uh, Byzantines or somebody else. But that was just a, a nothing important. Now comes the time, eighth year of Hijri. So this is eight years after Nabi Kareem sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was forced to leave Makkatul Mukarramah, the city that Akka Kareem sallallahu alayhi wa sallam loved so dearly. The city where Nabi Kareem sallallahu alayhi wa sallam had grown up. The city that held everything for Nabi Kareem Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, meant everything to Nabi Kareem Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, meant everything to the Muhajirun, those who migrated with Nabi Kareem Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, emigrated with Nabi Kareem Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, those who had left their families behind, those who had left their houses behind. You know, this city meant everything. Nabi Kareem Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam announces that we are going to Makkah al Makarramah with an army of 10,000 soldiers. 10,000 companions, Allahu Akbar. Some narrations say 12,000, some say 10. But the scholars say that there's no conflict here because en route, many other tribes joined with the contingent. So there could have been 12,000. Initially, 10,000 set out from Medina al Manavra, and then others joined them. And these were different tribes under different flags that had joined um, before and after the departure. And it's the 10th of Ramadan, the Muslims are fasting. Nabi Kareem sallallahu alayhi wa sallam reaches an area of, and in this area, Akka Kareem sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and Nabi Kareem sallallahu alayhi wa sallam asks for some water. Now it's the hot Arabian Peninsula, you've got an army of 10,000, and you know, it's, it's difficult. So Akka Kareem sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, make it easier for the companions because Allah Azza wa has given permission in certain circumstances. So Nabi Kareem Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam break their fast. He also instruct the companions to do likewise and the companions then uh, break their fast because they're performing jihad and the traveling that Allah Azza wa had allowed. Now, Akka Kareem Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam reaches al Juhfa and Hazrat Sayyidina Abbas radiallahu ta'ala you remember had reverted to Islam 
Um, and you remember that when he came to the court of Nabi Kareem sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and Aka Kareem sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said ransom and he said, well, I haven't got anything. And Nabi Kareem sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, uncle, what are you saying? What about that treasure that you buried at home? And he said, okay, how do you know about that, my nephew? Because only I knew about it and my wife knew about it and I'd left it there for my children. And he said, I believe that you are the messenger of Allah because nobody else could have told me that. So he had embraced Islam, but he was living in Mecca. He was living in Mecca. The scholars write there were two things. One, he'd got permission from Nabi Akrim to remain in Mecca to serve the pilgrims with Zamzam and to look after the pilgrims because this was the duty of the Banu Hashim. But also, as well as that, Nabi Akrim had strategically placed him there so that Akka Akrim could get information in relation to what was happening to Mecca, in Mecca al Makarama. Now, with Hazrat Sayyidina Abbas, two people also arrived at this maqam. So this 10,000 con contingent has set out, this battalion, this, this army has, has set out to march towards Mecca. And nobody knows what is happening till the day before. The day before they're told we're going to Mecca so that they can make the last preparations. And now they're all ready to go. The two cousins of Nabi Akrim Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, uh, Abu Sufyan ibn Harith. Now this is not the other Abu Sufyan, the, the leader that we were talking about, this is a different Abu Sufyan. This is a cousin of Nabi Akrim Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and Abdullah uh, ibn Abi Umayyah. This is another cousin. Now, both of these people were proved very difficult for Islam and had really brought grief to Nabi Akrim Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. They had sterilized Akka Akrim Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. They had written um, couplets against Islam, against Nabi Akrim sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. They had refused to acknowledge Islam. They had made life difficult. And the scholars write that they had caused deep-hearted distress to Nabi Akrim sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam on the proclamation of prophethood. So, Akka Akrim sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam turns away from them. Nabi Akrim sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam doesn't look at them at, on that moment mercifully because of what they'd done. They'd opposed Islam for so long, but not just opposed, they were really the mouthpieces, the social media pieces of the time for the Quraysh and the Kuffar. And so they had hurt Nabi Akrim Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in different ways. And Akka Akrim Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam turns away from them. Now, one of the uh, mothers of the believers, the wives of Nabi Akrim Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, has Sayyidina Umm Salma radiallahu ta'ala comes to the best of creation Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and says, O Messenger of Allah Azzawajal, Will your cousins be the most unfortunate people in the world for not receiving your mercy? Hearing this emotional plea, Nabi Akrim sallallahu alayhi wa sallam takes pity on them. And Nabi Akrim sallallahu alayhi wa sallam had the most beautiful heart that has ever been created. So as soon as this is there, Akka Akrim sallallahu alayhi wa sallam's anger changes to mercy. And uh, at the time, Sayyidina Ali suggests to Hazrat uh, Abu, uh, Abu Sufyan ibn Harith and Hazrat Abdullah Abi ibn Umayyah, they say, Go to Nabi Akrim sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Hazrat Umm Salma is already talking to them. Nabi Akrim sallallahu alayhi wa sallam's anger seems to be um, uh, getting lighter and Nabi Akrim sallallahu alayhi wa sallam will look at you mercifully. But go there and read the ayat of the Quran where the brothers came to Sayyidina Yusuf alayhi salam and what they said. So go and read this and Nabi Akrim sallallahu alayhi wa sallam no doubt will bless you with their mercy. So they come to the court of Nabi Akrim Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and they, they read the ayat of the Quran. The translation is Surah Yusuf uh, verse 91. By Allah, undoubtedly Allah has given you superiority over us and we were indeed guilty. And that's what the brothers of Sayyidina Yusuf Alaihi Salam said when they came, when he was the king of Misr. So these now two cousins that come to the court of Nabi Akrim Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and they say this. And Nabi Akrim sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, being the best of creation sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, replies, and how does Akka Akrim sallallahu alayhi wa sallam reply? What better way to reply to an ayat of the Qur'an than another beautiful ayat of the Qur'an? Akka Akrim sallallahu alayhi wa sallam recites the next verse in Surah Yusuf 92. There is no reproach on you this day. May Allah forgive you and He is the most merciful of all those who show mercy. And subhanAllah, the way that Sayyidina Yusuf alayhi wa sallam forgave his brothers, in exactly the same way, Akka Kareem sallallahu alayhi wa sallam blessed these two companions as well. SubhanAllah. So he pardons them and then Hazrat Sayyidina Abu Sufyan recites some couplets in the shan of Nabi Akreem sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in the honor of Nabi Akreem sallallahu alayhi wa sallam sincerely apologizes for the defamatory 
statements he made in the past and, you know, asked for forgiveness for the period of ignorance. Then, for the rest of his life, the scholars write, that because of what he'd done in the age of ignorance before he came into Islam, he always keep, kept his head bowed in the court of Nabi Karim sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And he always gave the utmost respect and reverence in the court of Nabi Karim sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And that guilt of what he'd done in the past always haunted him. And no, you know, Allah Zawajal forgives people when they come into Islam. And he'd been, he knew he'd been forgiven his sins. But having recognized the best of creation, having known that this is the Prophet of Allah Zawajal, this is the merciful Prophet, and the fact that Nabi Karim sallallahu alayhi wa sallam forgave him, he just couldn't bear what he had done in the past. And one day Nabi Akim Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said that, that you know, um, Allah Zawajal too loves him because of his regret. And I hope that Abu Sufyan Ibn Harith will fill the void left by the martyrdom of my uncle Hazrat Amir Hamza radiallahu ta'ala anhu. So Nabi Akim Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam too um, loved him as well. Now, this huge army, 10,000, is now marching towards Makkah. And it's a miracle how quickly they get there because the scholars write that usually for a single person to get there, it took six or seven days. But for a caravan, it took a lot longer, 10, 12, 14 days. For an army of 10,000, it was a very long journey. So when these, this army of 10 or 12,000 is marching, you'd expect them to take about 15 days, but it didn't. It was amazing. It was a miracle of Nabi Karim sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Within eight or nine days, they were on the doorsteps of Makkah. Now the Muslim army sets up camp in Maral Zahran, a place close to Makkah. Here, Nabi Karim sallallahu alaihi wasallam then instructs the army and says to each soldier, "Light your own fire." So they all light their own little fires, and these fires are lit by ten thousand soldiers, and they appear like a sea of light which is stretching for miles and miles and miles, and it's lighting up the whole area. Now, by now, because caravans are pass passing, these are trade routes, the kuffar of Mecca have learned that the Muslim army is marching towards Mecca. They don't know the finer details, they don't know how many they are, how well equipped they are, or anything else, but they know they are. So, they send, they have a, uh, their own meeting, and they send uh, Abu Sufyan, the Abu Sufyan ibn Harb, ibn Hizam, and Budail ibn Warqa. These three to gather intelligence. So these three come out and they now want to see what the size of the army is, what is happening, what the condition is, what the intentions are. So they come out as spies. They come out of Makkah towards this place where the Muslim army is resting. Now, as they come out, Allah plans things in amazing ways and is the best of planners. Just by sheer luck, and good for them, they meet Hazrat Sayyidina Abbas radiallahu ta'ala And he meets them, now he sees them, he recognizes them, he says, what are you doing here? And they say, well, we believe that Muhammad sallallahu has brought an army, and we wanted to find out information about it and everything else. So he says, look, if the Muslim army sees you, they will take off your head straight away. You are some of the worst you know, people, worst tyrants and worst persecutors, and they're not going to know, but you will not survive. The only way you're now going to survive, because you're very close to the Muslim camp, and there's 10,000 soldiers here, is if you come with me. Come with me, and I will, I will take you to the Prophet ﷺ. Otherwise, you've had it. And whether it's today or tomorrow, so even if you were to try and get back today, and you survived, when the Muslims march to Mecca tomorrow, Abu Sufyan, your head is coming off. You were the worst of all people, and you were the, you know, the most despicable of all these people. So you, you've got no chance. So as they say, Nabbas you know, manages to convince him. He then takes him and says, look. And Abu Sufyan says, what is this? Is this the people of tribes who have come to help us at this? Well, where's all this light coming from? What are all these fires? We've been saved. The Muslim army must be coming. And therefore, somebody's come to help us, or this huge army, or this huge caravan. So Hazrat Sayyidina Abbas radiallahu ta'ala puts him out to his misery. He says, this is the army of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Can you imagine Abu Sufyan 
For 23 years, he's persecuted Islam, he's persecuted the Muslims, he's made life difficult for Nabi Karim Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam to the extent that in the you know, silence of the night, Aka Karim Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam leave Makkatul Mukarma with just Siddiqui Akbar radiallahu ta'ala, no, one man. And now eight years later, Nabi Karim Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is returning to Makkatul Mukarma with an army of 10 to 12,000, subhanAllah. So he says, look, the only way you're going to survive is get on my camel, follow me into the camp, and I will take you to Nabi Kareem Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And that's your only salvation. There's no other way. So, as it is, Sayyidina Abbas was on the outskirts doing something, a duty for Nabi Kareem Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And so he was riding the mule of Nabi Kareem Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So, as he reaches the entry point to this caravan, the guards stop him and he says, I am Abbas and I am on the mule of Nabi Kareem sallallahu alayhi wasallam. And you know, being as it is in Abbas would give him a lot of leeway. But being on the donkey of Nabi Kareem sallallahu alayhi wasallam, the, the mule of Nabi Kareem sallallahu alayhi wasallam, it gave him that high respect. Because obviously it was obvious that Nabi Kareem sallallahu alayhi wasallam had sent him for a special mission. So as they're coming through this huge um, army and this huge contingent of different battalions, um, all three of them are with Sayyidina Abbas radiallahu ta'ala anhu, and um, they, they are heading there, suddenly, and one person spots them. He's guarding uh, the area close to Nabi Kareem Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, and he immediately recognizes Abu Sufyan. He sees the eyes, and he, he says, that is Abu Sufyan. That person was none other than Sayyidina Umar Farooq radiallahu ta'ala. He cannot contain his desire for revenge. And he immediately shouts out, that is the enemy of Allah, Abu Sufyan. He rushes to the messenger of Allah and says, Ya Rasulullah sallallahu Abu Sufyan has been captured. Permit me to strike his neck. There is no treaty now between us. There is nothing stopping me slaying this despicable person. And Hazrat Sayyidina Abbas radiallahu ta'ala anhu quickly grabs the three of them, brings them to the court of Nabi Kareem sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and says, Ya Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, these three were spying for the Quraysh. I have brought them here and I plead with you. I have given them my protection and their lives should be spared. Saying this, Nabi Kareem sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, saying to Akka Kareem sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Ya Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, I have granted them protection. Now, the enmity that Abu Sufyan had, everybody was raring to go at him. There was no secret. I mean, this person was single-handedly responsible for marching hundreds of people. This person was single-handedly responsible for setting up the battles of Ohad and Khandak and, you know, all these great difficulties. This man brought together different tribes to put an end to Islam time and time again. This person was truly despicable. He had collaborated with Jews, he had collaborated with other Arabian Peninsula tribes, he had collaborated with everybody to put an end to Islam. So you can understand how Muslims were now feeling. They had Abu Sufyan, the Abu Sufyan, in their midst, and they wanted to put an end to him. However, Nabi Kareem sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam wasn't any normal person, wasn't a normal prophet, if I can use that word. Nabi Kareem sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is described as being Rauf, the most affectionate, Rahim, the most compassionate. And so it was that that saved Abu Sufyan that day. You know, he, it said, the scholars write, that he was a criminal that was brought before the judge to be dealt with. And there was no doubt about his crimes. And there was only one punishment that was befitting him. But yet, he'd come to the court of the mercy to the world. Rahmatan lil alameen. And so the, the uh, narration in Sahih Bukhari Shri mentions that um, Abu Sufyan's heart started to change. And he started to become inclined to Islam, but then at the same time, he was still thinking about other things as well. And he's thinking about death and you know, different things. The other two that are with him, they accept Islam and they pronounce the Shahada. Then, the uh, following morning, uh, al zurkani says that uh, Hazrat Abu Sufyan, who would now become a companion, accepted Islam. And one narration mentions 
that there was a conversation between him and Nabi Kareem sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Akka Kareem sallallahu alaihi wasallam said, "Oh Abu Sufyan, do you still not have faith that there is no god but Allah?" And the reply that uh, Hazrat Sayyidina Abu Sufyan radiyallahu ta'ala anhu gave, because now you got to remember, he's a companion, he's accepted Islam. Everything else, no matter what he'd done, is now in the past. But his reply, what a beautiful way to start your Islamic life. May my parents be ransomed for you. Ah, uh, how clement, gracious, and devoted you are to kin. I thought that if I, if there had been another God besides Allah, he would have assisted us today. And basically what the scholars write is that Abu Sufyan said, look, I believe in you, Ya Rasulullah and I believe in Allah Azza wa as being the one and only God. Because for all these years, 23 years I've been fighting you, and my gods have never helped me. You've always come out on top. You've always been successful. You've always been victorious. And just that in itself leads me to concede that you must be and are the most truthful. Nabi Kareem Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam replies, O Abu Sufyan, does there remain doubt that I am the messenger of Allah Azza wa Jal? And he again replies, May my parents be a ransom for you. Ah, the clement, the gracious, and the devoted to your kin you are. But as for the confession you ask of me to make, something in my heart still makes me hesitate to concede. At this point, Hazrat Sayyidina Abbas intervenes and said, Woe to you, Abu Sufyan. Surrender yourself to Allah and bear witness that there is no God but Allah and that Muhammad وسلم, is the messenger of Allah. Before you lose your head, Abu Sufyan utters the declaration of faith and enters Islam. Faith and devotion grew every day for Hazrat Sayyidina Abu Sufyan. Some of the scholars write that maybe in the early days he was still had in, you know, that doubt and maybe it was the fear of death, but there was no doubt that he became a companion of Nabi Kareem sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and har sahabi ye Nabi jannati jannati every companion of Nabi Kareem sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is without doubt uh, destined for paradise and this is why suddenly my tone has changed from Abu Sufyan the, 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 the despicable and the torture and everything else to now that is all gone in the time of ignorance now it is Hazrat Sayyidina Abu Sufyan radiallahu ta'ala, the great companion of Nabi Kareem sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. Al Kareem sallallahu alayhi wa sallam instructs Sayyidina Abbas radiallahu ta'ala and says, Abbas, take Abu Sufyan, go and stand on that high place and let him watch the army that I brought go past. So they go and stand on this high place, and as the different contingents and battalions are going past with their own flags, Hazrat Sayyidina Abbas radiallahu ta'ala is saying, Abu Sufyan is asking, who are they? And Hazrat uh, Abbas is saying, that is such and such a tribe. That is such and such a tribe. Who are they? That is such and such a tribe. Have they joined Islam as well? Yes, they have. Nabi Kareem sallallahu alayhi wa sent the message. They accepted Islam. Fulan companion went and invited them. They were, and he's just amazed. Battalion after battalion after battalion is passing by. And Abu Sufyan, the chieftain of Mecca, the, you know, the, the leader of Mecca now, is, uh, he has already accepted Islam, but now... He's, he's just mesmerized by the army that Akka Kareem sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has brought. And eventually he's saying, well, why, why can't I see um, the, the Prophet of Allah azawajal? Why can't I see Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? And then and, and from a distance, a battalion is coming. And he says, who, what is this white battalion? It seems like light is shining from this, uh, this entourage. Who is that? Which battalion is that? Which tribe is that? And Hazrat Abbas says that that is the Muhajir and the Ansar with Nabi Kareem sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Subhanallah. And what a sight that must have been from that hilltop to see this battalion, the last, come in. And Abu Sufyan described it as illuminating, you know, and that illuminating, um, you know, entourage entering towards Mecca, subhanallah. You know, and... As this is Abu Sufyan would have the honor and the pleasure of taking, play, uh, taking part in a battle as well, the Ghazwa of Taif and the Battle of Yarmouk, but that would come later. So the glory of the army and the Muslims passing by, Abu Sufyan was now mesmerized. Now, Nabi Kareem sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam was asked by Sayyidina Abbas radiallahu ta'ala, Ya Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, I know Abu Sufyan, I've known him very well. He is very proud and he has a streak in him, which is a leadership thing. And so Nabi Kareem understood the psychology of all humans and especially those around them. 
So like Akrim sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, okay, so today I will give Abu Sufyan something special. Whoever is in the precinct of Mecca will be safe. Whoever goes into the house will be safe. Whoever goes into the house of Abu Sufyan will be safe. And this was the gift that Nabi Akrim sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was going to give to Abu Sufyan. But before that happened, something else happened. One of the companions, he sees Abu Sufyan and he says, Today we're going to slaughter you. And he's reading couplets saying, We're going to shed blood in the haram today. And everything is going to be halal for us. You persecuted us for all these years. You tortured and killed our people. Today, look at our army. We've come with, ten you've got no chance. Today, you, you've had it. And so Abu Sufyan is quite scared. So he runs to the court of Nabi Akrim sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And he says, look, he is saying this. Akakrim sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is saying, no, he is saying wrong. This is not the day of bloodshed. Contrary to that, this is the day of mercy. And Akka Karim sallallahu alayhi wa sallam takes the flag from this Sa'ad radiallahu ta'ala anhu and says, that, you know, you shouldn't be bearing the flag of the Ansar if this is what you think. And if you're going around saying today will be the day of bloodshed and today we're going to be permitted to kill everybody even in the haram. That is not the way that I am going to go into Makkah. I am going to go into Makkah in a way that the world has never seen and will never see until the day of judgment. We're going to back to the city which persecuted me. You know, we're going back to the city which persecuted the Muslims. This is the city where Nabi Akrim sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was choked. This is the city where Nabi Akrim sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was in sajda and the intestines of camels were put on them. This is the city where the road, the walkway that Nabi Akrim sallallahu alayhi wa sallam passed by, stones were thrown onto the feet of Nabi Akrim sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. This was the city where thorns were placed under the feet of Nabi Akrim sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. This was the city that dragged the Muslims on the hot Arabian deserts and tortured them to death. This was the city where they were placed on coals, hot coals, and stones were placed on them. This was the city where, you know, people People were torn limb to limb for being Muslim, for saying Allah is one and this is the Prophet of Allah This is the city that Muslims had to either be kept in captivity or had to run away, leave everything and go to Madinatul Manavra. These were the people who had tortured the Muslims beyond comprehension, kept them for three years without food and water to the extent that even children were malnourished and they had to eat leaves from trees. So can you imagine that same city now, and the Muslims are coming back into it with a contingent of 10,000. You've got, you know, itchy hands to take revenge. You've got people angry. You've got people frustrated. And all of this, and yet amidst all of this, is the mercy to the world. Subhanallah. And so, Nabi Akrim sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam, order three the army to split up into three. One enters from the west, one from the east, and Hazrat Sayyidina Khalid bin Walid enters from the other side. But again, what the army, the entire army is told is that you will not unleash your swords. You will not unsheath your swords today. We are not here to kill anybody. You will not kill anybody. You will not hurt anybody. You will not scare anybody. No man, women, or children will be hurt today. But Ya Rasulullah Sallallahu we're going to walk into Mecca? Yes. We're going to be walking to Mecca and we're going to be merciful. And the only time that you can do anything is if you're attacked. Now, once the Muslims start to come, Hazrat Sayyidina Abbas says to Abu Sufyan, right, you go and tell them. If they resist, they will be killed. But if they don't resist, then they will get protection. If they're in uh, their own houses, nothing will happen to them. And that if they're, in your, if, if they're in your house, nothing will happen to them. So he goes back and he's, he's riding along and he's screaming and shouting and he says, look, um, I've been to see the contingent. And he doesn't tell them he's accepted Islam. He can't because he, you know, they, they torture him. So he says, I've been, I've seen the army of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. You will not be able to fight them. There are so many of them that no matter what you do, today is your end. So I advise you that uh, whoever comes to my house, and the scholars write, this was one of the things that uh, at that time, Hazrat Sayyidina Abu Sufyan had. He was very proud, he was a leader. So he actually says, whoever comes into my house, 
He's protected. I have got that guarantee from Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So come to my house. And this was him, kind of that, that previous kind of um, uh, traits that he wanted to show himself as the leader. Come to my house. You want protection today from this army of 10,000? You've got to hide behind me. That was the sort of thing. So he tells them. And the people of Makkah say, no, we want to fight. We want to do this. He said, I've seen the army. There's 10 to 12,000 of them. There's no way on this earth that you're going to be able to do anything. You're going to be slaughtered like lambs. So do not be foolish. Do not be foolish. I'm telling you, I have agreed terms. Come to my house. You will be protected. He was a leader. He was using that. So somebody turns around and says, how can we all fit in your house? Your house isn't big enough. Then he comes out with the full conditions. He said, okay, well, if you can't all fit in my house, then the Muhammad said, whoever is in the haram will also be protected. And whoever goes into their own homes and closes the door will also be protected. At this, they breathe a sigh of relief. They think, okay. So they all start to go their different ways. And some of them, they go into the haram. Because you've got to remember, this is Makkah al Not everybody's got a house there. So some are pilgrims, some are passing, some are traders. So the traders and all the others head towards haram because they haven't got a house to go to. Those who had houses go into the house. Those who wanted to go to Hazrat Sayyidina Abu Sufyan radiallahu house go there. And Nabi Kareem Sallallahu also said, whoever goes to the house of Hazrat Sayyidina Abbas radiallahu ta'ala, he will also be protected. So some go there as well. So all this, he said, Abu Sufyan radiallahu is saying this. Obviously, they don't know he's a Muslim yet. His wife suddenly comes out, Hind. Now she was a staunch enemy of Islam. So she comes out shouting and screaming at her husband. And the scholars write that she was shouting, you know, explicit. And she was swearing at her husband and calling him a coward and saying, how dare you tell us not to fight the Muslims? We are the Quraysh. We're going to obliterate them. We're going to do this. You are a weak man. And she's literally sh shouting and says, how dare you do this? But Hazrat they say, Abu Sufyan radiallahu ta'ala had seen what he'd seen. And he said to the people of the Quraysh, do not listen to this foolish woman. She's being emotional. Don't be emotional today. Because Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has got an army of 10,000. And every one of them wants to take revenge on you. The, the time that you pick up the sword will be the end of you. The only salvation you've got today is to accept what has happened. And do not raise your heads. Because I know that you will be pardoned. Because this is the guarantee that I've been given. There were still some within this uh, Makkah, some Quraysh, some people who thought, no, we will fight. So a small group came together. They attacked the Muslims. Two or three Muslims were martyred. 15 to 20 of uh, these people were killed. The kuffar, the disbelievers were killed. Um, this, they attacked the contingent of Hazrat Khalid bin Walid, of all people. Um, and so they were, they were killed. But that was the only skirmish that happened when 10,000 strong army marched back on Mecca. What happened? How did they enter Mecca? You know, how did they treat the people? This is something magnificent. Nabi Kareem sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam rides into Mecca al Mukarramah on the Sheikh Amal Kaswa. And Akka Kareem sallallahu alayhi wa sallam's head Mubarak is bowed so much that the beard Mubarak is touching the camel. Nabi Kareem sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is doing the zikr of Allah azza wa jal. Thanking Allah Azza wa Jal and reading Surah Fatah and you know, reading the great ayats of the Quran as he's entering Mecca, such humbleness the world had never seen, such amazing characteristics the world had never seen. You've got to remember, this was the city that persecuted Nabi Kareem Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. This was the city that Akka Kareem Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam had cried when they left. This was the city that was beloved to the beloved Habib Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And this was the city which, you know, time after time, Akka Kareem Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam wanted to go back to. And yet, now that Akka Kareem Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam came back to it, that emotion was there. But the greatest thing on the lips of Nabi Kareem Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was, Ya Allah, Dira Shukr, Ya Allah, I thank you. I'm grateful to you. I'm humble towards you that you've allowed me. Now, have you ever seen in the history of mankind, will you ever see a, a leader marching in 
to a city that he has conquered in this way, and a city which has persecuted him as well. Abu Sufyan said it. He said, when he saw the great army and the contingent, he said to Hazrat Sayyidina Abbas, he said, your nephew has built a great kingdom, and he's got a lot of following. And Hazrat Sayyidina Abbas said, Abu Sufyan, it's not a kingdom. It is prophethood that has led to this miracle. And look at the way that Nabi Kareem sallallahu alayhi wa sallam came in. Any king of the world, anybody else, when they march into a city which has persecuted them for over 20 years, you know, this is a long time. And yet, those who have done everything within their power are now before them at their mercy. And I suppose the words at their mercy says it all. Because they weren't at anybody else's mercy. They weren't at the mercy of any king. They were at the mercy of the mercy to the world. What more can I say? And the mercy to the world. What Nabi Karim sallallahu alayhi wa did next. And what happened next. Will never be matched ever. Has, you know, nobody's seen an example like it. And nobody will ever see an example like it. Till the day of judgment. Aka Karim sallallahu alayhi wa sallam humbly came into Makkah al -Mukarma. But what happened when Nabi Karim sallallahu alayhi wa sallam came to Makkah? Where did they go? How did the events unfold? Inshallah, we will cover in our next, next episode. Inshallah, azawajal. Subhanallah, that conquest of Makkah. Wow. It's, it's just, just, just thinking about it, you know, gives you um, that emotion and that feeling. Can you imagine the companions that were with Nabi Karim sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? Subhanallah. Inshallah, we're going to carry on from there next week. Salu ala al-Habib sallallahu ta'ala ala Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. I've got to give you the answer to the question. The question was, when did zakat become farz? Zakat became farz in second year of hijri. Two hijri was when zakat became farz. Inshallah, we will see you next week. Salu ala al-Habib sallallahu ta'ala ala Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The mercy to the world, 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 sallallahu alayhi wa sallam.